top of the hour, let's get you the ongoing controversy regarding the British National Broadcaster's documentary on Prime Minister Narendra Modi when he was the Chief Minister of the State of Gujarat. Now, the developments further suggest when it comes to an activist and advocate, Vineet Jindal, who has gone ahead to file a complaint against the UK's national broadcaster, accusing it of trying to provoke the Muslim community in India and the Hindus in the country. Demanding an FIR be filed against the BBC, the complaint has now stated that the Prime Minister of India has been described as anti-Muslim and a major perpetrator of the 20, 2002 Gujarat riots, which were an indelible impact on generations of Hindus and also of Muslims. This is also coming after the Ministry of External Affairs responded to the film and slammed it as a propaganda piece. Addressing a press briefing, the MES spokesperson Arindam Bakhtri had said the documentary is designed to push a particular narrative with bias and a lack of objectivity that is blatantly visible. We think this is a, a propaganda piece uh, designed to push a particular discredited narrative. Um, the bias, a lack of objectivity, and frankly a continuing colonial mindset is blatantly visible. If anything, uh, this film or documentary is a reflection on the agency and individuals that are peddling uh, this narrative again. Uh, it makes us wonder whether um, about the purpose of this exercise and the agenda behind it. And frankly, we do not wish to dignify such efforts. Let's get on also a word as we have been speaking to experts and also uh, when it comes to the former Indian Foreign Secretary, Mr. Kaval Sibal, is also with us here on the broadcast. So very good afternoon to you and thank you very much for taking out your time. This series has been creating a lot of controversy, Mr. Sibal. How much credibility would you really attach to the so-called secret British government report that has been mentioned in this BBC docu-series, sir? Well, the British government had absolutely no locus and I to conduct an inquiry or investigate uh, something that is happening in a foreign country. This is just simply not done. This is interfering, gross interference in the internal affairs of other countries. If they wanted to get briefed, the right way to do diplomatically is either to ask their ambassador uh, to come and speak at the right level and get a briefing on what is happening, or call in the Indian High Commissioner in the UK and express their concerns, whatever they are, with regard to what is happening on the ground. But you do not interfere in, in a sovereign country by working over its head to conduct an independent inquiry, because that shows that either, first of all, you don't respect the sovereignty of another country, and then you don't believe in their own systems of inquiry and investigation and, and rely on their findings. You want to have an independent uh, way of uh, verifying things, mm. and which is absolutely what our spokesman has said, <laughs> is a colonial kind of an attitude as Britain still has responsibility for internal governance in India. This is ridiculous. Right, but Mr. Sibyl, you know, you've been the Foreign Secretary at the time as well. Can you tell us about the communication that you've been receiving from the EU about this and uh, what did you exactly convey to the missions at that time, sir? No, 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 not, not, from the EU, not from the EU. I got information that they had sent a, a diplomat on a fact-finding mission mm. uh, to Gujarat, and this was uh, brought to my attention uh, by uh, one of our very friendly EU ambassadors. Um, and uh, he also told me that uh, it was a very negative uh, report of, on what, was, what had happened on the ground. And I took exception to that because uh, the British diplomat had absolutely no right uh, to go and uh, do a spot on the spot investigation uh, without first approaching the government to find out if they had concerns uh, about anything with regard to that. But to, to, to uh, actually take the initiative uh, to conduct a fact-finding mission over the head of the Ministry of External Affairs and the Government of India mm. was unacceptable interference in our internal affairs, which is why then I issued a, a strong uh, a statement through the spokesman, uh, cautioning, warning the missions in, in, in New Delhi mm. not to interfere in India's internal affairs. Mm. 
No, absolutely, sir. Because we've also had a word with Mr. Swapan Das Gupta of the BJP, who has been featuring in the documentary, and he's been telling us about the rebuttal of the British government report that has not been taken on air in this particular documentary. And he's gone ahead to describe its finding as uh, something which is tendentious, but also has been saying that this has been not reflected in the final cut of the documentary, sir. What do you think of this suggests about the motivation and the intent of the filmmakers? I don't think we have to at all feel uh, puzzled about the motivations of the uh, of those who are behind this document. It's very clear. Why are they raking up all this issue uh, 20 years after the events happened? And the fact that this has been a raging controversy in India all these years with the SIT set up by the Supreme Court and finally the Supreme Court itself uh, giving a verdict uh, this year uh, on the findings uh, of uh, the, the SIT. Uh, so they, they are trying actually to build a certain narrative. And that narrative uh, is a prolongation of what we have seen in the Western press in general, hmm. and particularly the U UK and the US press. Hmm. The Economist, The Guardian, The Independent, all those have been lashing out at India. Economists went to the extent actually when the elections were going to be uh, fought in 2019 to say that uh, the Indians should not vote for uh, for Modi and the BJP. No. <laughs> what is what is their right to interfere in the internal affairs of other countries in this manner? But they have this very imperious attitude uh, that they still have some responsibility of how the third world countries should govern themselves and which are leaders who are acceptable and which leaders are not acceptable. This is a hangover of uh, their imperialistic thinking, mm. which is totally unacceptable. But then added to this is the problem that they are very strong uh, pro-Pakistani pro uh, lobbies and uh, the local Muslim population, in particular constituencies in the UK, uh, in, in terms of percentages is very high. And so many of the British MPs, like Jack Straw, uh, were dependent. His constituency had about 35% uh, Muslims were dependent uh, on, the, on their votes. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they were party to propagating uh, the, their propaganda. Uh, and this is continuing. This is continuing e e even until now. And the fact that a Pak origin MP hmm. says this in the House of Commons, hmm. uh, that Imran Hussain, hmm. uh, shows clearly what are the, uh, what are the uh, uh, lobbies behind, behind this. Hmm. And now with the elections coming uh, uh, in 2023, 2024, hmm. There is uh, an attempt to continue to build up this scenario. But what is of concern is that they they are trying to, um, you know, uh, promote more fissures in our, in our society mm. by creating a sense of victimhood amongst the Muslims, the Muslims mm. and projecting the BJP and Modi government as being anti-Muslim mm. and therefore making it a minority, minority majority issue. Mm. Uh, I just don't understand how the Western press uh, conducts itself both ethically and in terms of uh, their reporting on other countries. Uh, are they in the business of uh, creating problems between countries or are in the business of uh, actually contributing what they can in terms of moving forward the relationship in positive directions? After mm. all, with the, with the UK now, India has a very good relationship. It is progressing forward. We have a roadmap uh, of uh, expanding our ties uh, by 2030 in various directions. We are negotiating an FTA uh, mm. with the UK government. So whereas the government is a little more cautious in, in what they do, but the press is on its own uh, trip. They think that they have no responsibility at all. I can, I can still accept if they were reporting objectively, mm. based on facts. Uh, but if they are slanted, if they are prejudiced, if they are biased, then I just don't understand what their conception is about their role mm. in, in terms of uh, developing better understanding of uh, UK's uh, foreign partners, uh, for instance. And lastly, I would like to say that I found uh, the British PM Rishi Sunak's intervention in response to Imran Hussain as unsatisfactory because he, it was a very tepid uh, response. He didn't disown the BBC commentary. He, he merely disowned the characterization uh, of, uh, of the Modi and whatever else in the film as mentioned, as expressed by Imran Hussain in the UK parliament.
He didn't disown the commentary. And he also said that, you know, we, we are always concerned about persecution everywhere and this and that and that, and that position is well known, which was an unnecessary caveat. So he, so uh, I, I don't know, I've seen some commentators saying that, oh, you know, <laughs> Rishi Sunak has rebutted right. um, uh, what was said and uh, in, a, in a sense trying to give the impression that he has backed uh, the Indian PM and in India. Hmm. Yes, he has he has not said anything negative, hmm. but I'm afraid uh, his intervention could have been much stronger All right. in actually saying something very positive about India-UK relations and how he, they intend to carry them forward. That would have been a much better way of uh, addressing the issue uh, rather than simply saying, I don't agree with the characterization. Right, but would the... Would the ties really remain unaffected between the India and uh, between India and the UK there, sir? But Mr. Sibyl, when the MEA is calling out this uh, documentary as a piece of propaganda, sir, where the UK Prime Minister has called it as mischaracterization. Now, is it an indication that uh, the Indo-UK ties remain unaffected? You have been saying that a strongly worded statement by Rishi Sunak would have been uh, more appropriate. Well, of course, you know, the ties are not going to be affected by a single documentary. And we know what the background of this, what the source of this is, what the purpose of this is. But if uh, the if this continues and uh, from now until the next elections and the UK government uh, does not do anything to uh, try to try and uh, control uh, these lobbies, then I'm afraid uh, Indian public opinion would get more and more alienated. And what the objectives that we have in terms of strengthening our ties with the UK, which are good objectives and which should be pursued, they will be hampered. Mm -hmm. So Britain has to do a little bit of introspection, the British political class, and see whether uh, under, under the guise of freedom of expression, they can allow their state-owned organizations to do vicious propaganda against uh, the prime minister of a friendly country because there's no reason why after 20 years they want to do something on Modi. I mean, what is their interest? Right. And raking up the whole Gujarat issue, what is their interest? Obviously, it's a malign interest. Right, sir. Mr. Sibyl, last question to you, sir. When it comes to the British government there, uh, you know, ordering for this secret inquiry then, do you see it as an interference in our internal affairs as well? I mean, the British have been saying that citizens there too were killed during the Gujarat uh, riots. So are they therefore entitled to carry out uh, such uh, secret, uh, you know, some kind of committees that they have been forming uh, to actually look into what had happened back then, 20 years back? Well, you know, Nonsense, complete nonsense. I mean, if we have, a, uh, for example, there are instances where, uh, uh, you know, Indian citizens or people of Indian origin are killed or whatever else is, is happening in many parts of the world. So do we go and conduct secret inquiries in that regard? We take up the issue with the governments in question and ask them to give us a background and seek redress where redress is necessary. But you don't take upon yourself to send investigative teams or ask your mission to go on the spot and conduct a secret uh, inquiry. Uh, this, this, is, this is unacceptable. Unacceptable. All right. Mr. Sibyl, sir, thank you very much for taking out your time and speaking to us at length as far as what do you make of this uh, docu-series that has been released on part of the BBC there, sir. We continue.